Cat and Moose podcast. I'm Cat and I'm Moose. This is a true life podcast where we explore the quirks of being human. What's going on, you guys? Hey, Moose. Mm. Hey, Cat. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Welcome home from Birmingham. Thank you very much. Uh, what is going on? Let's see. Let's do a recap of our lives, you guys. Um, I am still in midlife crisis and um, learning to enjoy it and take it for what it is. Hmm. And she's also on her way to ketosis. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true statement. That's true. I have followed the yellow brick road to ketosis. I'm following it. I'm, I'm not quite in ketosis yet, but I'm trying to do a little bit of a diet change in order to help my mental health, which is a process. Um, so no, no, what I, I know a little bit about ketosis because in my early, early, early years of having diabetes, like when I was like five, six, seven years old, um, we were taught to fear ketosis. Like if your blood sugar oh, really? gets so high that you're spilling ketones, then that's, that's dangerous for a person with diabetes. However, talk to us a little bit about what keto, what happens in the body of a person that doesn't have a dead pancreas. What, yeah. what happens? Hmm. Well, from how I understand Great it. Great question. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm still learning and I do not want to bore any of our listeners who are like, look, I enjoy my carbs. So go away. Um, so I, do I. I'll talk about my journey. I've been talking to my doctor, who is your doctor and your doctor and who is amazing. And if anyone in Nashville wants the most amazing crew of people, go to Mindstream Integrative Health. They are incredible. So what I understand about ketosis is that there are now studies showing that when you can get your body into ketosis and stay there for long periods of time, that those who are dealing with major issues like cancer, um, it helps them get through chemo better. Hmm. It For people who are just focused on weight and mental health, mine is, I mean, I definitely need to lose some weight. Let's be here and be honest. But for me, I'm trying to find ways to, to help my mental health. Mm -hmm. And the way I described it to my, um, to my doctor is I have great intentions um, for movement and my body does not have the get up and go to do it. Hmm. And she was like, okay. And she just got really excited and I trust her so much that I follow her excitement. And so now I've got like this diabetic pack, like you have, it's, <laughs> it's just for ketosis and blood sugar, but I'm learning how, my body, uh, if you can become fat flexible is what I understand it's called, <laughs> which means once you're in ketosis, you start burning fat, but also there's so many positive things for your brain, like hmm. so much clearer thinking. Hmm. And, um, so I think the hardest thing, it's not a hard thing to follow because it's basically fat protein and very few carbs. But the hardest thing is getting the fat in and making sure they're like healthy fats. And so hmm. I'm learning a lot. Yeah, it sounds like a lot to learn. And what are you doing with the the blood diabetic sugar kit that's like mine? I've got two different kinds of strips. One measures my blood sugar and one measures my ketones. And mm -hmm. so um, like once you're in ketosis, it shows up at 0.5 or higher that mm -hmm. you have um, the ketones in your system in order to like basically create a lifestyle. And so hmm. there's like a certain level of ketosis that is like just good nutritionally to be in where you're not as, you're not intaking as many carbs. And then there's a whole therapeutic level that's really hard to get to. You're really hmm. cutting back at a major level, but that is for people who are going into chemo and wanting to, have less side effects and less symptoms mm. and that sort of thing. Wow. That is so fascinating. Like what we know about the body compared mm -hmm. to even like 30, 40 years ago, you know, it's like, I've, I've given this example before when I was diagnosed with diabetes, I was 
taking insulin that was extracted from cows. That's crazy. You know, and like, and now it's like, it's, you know, manufactured in a laboratory and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, now it's like, it, it does something for your mental health to be spilling ketones. That is so neat. What a neat, neat thing that you guys have, have been digging into. Yeah. And I've learned from a diabetic standpoint that type one diabetics like yourself have to be careful, obviously to not go into ketoacidosis, but it actually can be really good for you as well, but it just has to be monitored a little bit better to make Mm. sure you're not dying. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I need to offer a newsflash that I am dying. We're all dying. We're we're all moving toward an expiration date of this experience in this body in this lifetime. And in light of that, um, I have really taken your words to heart, Moose, from the past couple of weeks when you have said, people, get rid of your shit. Get rid of your shit. Um, As you know, I am remodeling my bathroom because it is extremely unsafe for anyone older than six years old to take a bath or a shower in the bathroom because the tub is just so clunky and it's just it's just weird. It's unsafe. And so I'm remodeling the bathroom. And in order for the contractor to start the demolition, I had to order a dumpster. And so. I had this dumpster rolled up to the house It came on a big truck and they put it in my driveway. So I have this big ass dumpster in my driveway since this past Monday and they did all the demolition of my bathroom took everything out. I mean, it looks like a completely different space and it used up about a 10th of the dumpster. And I was like, Oh, "Oh, yes. And let me tell you guys, that dumpster is about three quarters full. And I have just been getting rid of my shit. Like what kind of shit? I mean, I've gotten rid of, you know, like wine decanters I haven't even used in like 10 years. I've gotten rid of old uh, electronic equipment. I've gotten rid of all kinds of crap from outside in my shed. And I've gotten rid of, I've gone through every shelf and every cabinet in my office and I've gotten rid of old pens and pencils and I've gotten rid of all kinds of things. And, And I found this box of photographs that clearly are very important to me because I've kept them. And I went through them the other day. I had about a three hour trip down memory lane. And I also found in that stack of photos, I found a bunch of letters that my dad had written me. Whoa. Mm. And so, um, so I, yeah, so I read all these letters from my dad and it was really interesting how his language and my language are very similar. He had very invitational language in his writing, um, which I didn't, realized because I didn't even know what that was back when he was writing me those letters. And, um, and so I got kind of freaked out because I'm like, I have all these pictures and they hold all these memories and I don't want to throw them away, but I, what's, what am I going to do with them? I don't need them. And so I got really smart, went to Amazon, used my Amex points and I bought a photo scanner. Oh, fun. So now I have this photo scanner at my desk that I can take the picture like the one I sent you the other day of you and me before we jumped out of an airplane together and you just pop it in the scanner and it throws it into a little app and then I've got the picture forever. Well, that's That's fantastic. I would never have the patience to do that (laughs) ever. I bought this thing called Legacy Box two and a half years ago. And the idea of that is you put all of your photos in there, all of your videos, any electronic stuff that you want digitized and you fill it up and it's one price. If you could just fill up this box. So I only filled up, like you said with the dumpster, like only like one fourth of it. And I was like, Sarah, do you have any photos you'd like to put in here or videos or whatever? And she was like, great idea. And I was like, okay, I'm going to mail this off. The box is still in the attic and it has never been mailed. (laughs) How come? Because we gave up. (laughs) This is the story of my life. I get three quarters of the way through. (laughs) me too for what it's worth okay so what you does that feel good in your body oh it feels good on an absolute microscopic cellular level yes it feels good on a very like level like it has felt so wonderful 
I had two record plaques um, that I knew I would never hang up again for various reasons. They're just ones that I would not hang up in my office anymore. And um, I went out there and I took one of them and I slammed it up (laughs) against the inside of the dumpster. And I was like, this is going to shatter. It's going to go everywhere. And the damn thing didn't break. It just flopped. It just just went fucking plexiglass in there. (laughs) Yeah, it just went gunga 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 gunga. Like it made me so mad. I'm like, man, I wanted that cathartic experience, but um, but then I threw some stuff away today from my shed, and it shattered and exploded. Yeah, it was so good. Yes, it felt really good to answer your question. That is amazing. Yeah, Sarah, didn't you go and beat the shit out of some stuff recently? Yeah, I was trying to remember if I told you guys about that when I um, took my friend Elizabeth to a rage room. Yeah. Yes. It was the stupidest thing ever. (laughs) Like, I have had this dream in my mind for at least a decade where I want a large warehouse that has, like, library shelves set up and... There's all of the shelves that used to live at Blockbuster and there's old windows and old doors and like fucking huge hammers and like <laughs> you just gonna Come push on. everything, every shelf over Come on. and you're gonna like, this is a rage room. And so I knew it wasn't going to be quite to that level, but I went in and I found a place. It was probably... I don't, it was easy, easy to find. It's over there by uh, Opry Mills, and we show up. And my friend had just gone through a pretty rough. She was she was just in a, a grieving state, but also very angry. And like I yeah. was like, we need to go break something, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we I I booked That's the tickets. We friend, go, Sarah, and it's this old ass shopping center that's like falling apart. There's like weeds growing out of the co- the concrete in the parking lot. And we pull up and I'm like, I, we could get not, not murdered here, but like it's this mistransient land a little, there weren't whatever. Anyway, we go in, this girl is probably 16 and a half and she (laughs) explains all of our, (laughs) all of our rules very thoroughly. We had to show our IDs and she explains why and all these other kids try to come in and say they're 18 and they're not. We go in. We spent about eight minutes putting on all of our protective gear. So we each put on, like, we zip on those big, like, shop, like, full body shop, like, uniforms. Kind of like what you guys jumped out of the plane in. And yes. and then we had to pick, put goggles on and, like, pick our headgear and, like, gloves. Like, it's this whole thing. And then she walks us into a bedroom. A bedroom. And That's not in weird. the bedroom, the walls are covered with plywood and then there's one wall that's covered with like metal like a sheet of metal and then she brings in one Lowe's bucket with like four recycled glass bottles and two like vases <laughs> and she you was like done that on your back porch she was like you guys have a half hour go at it you know just when you're there's ready like we're four done four glasses it took us like two and a half minutes to yeah. Just blast the shit out of that glass. Yeah. And uh, we felt very awkward because the lights were all on. It wasn't like vibey at all. It was just <laughs> weird. And then there was there was like a couple tires in there and like a sledgehammer and like just some like pieces of metal and like part of like a motherboard from a old <laughs> computer. It was just like I spent eighty five dollars on that and we were done. In, we were done in 18 minutes. It was out yeah. The door. Okay, Sarah, I've got this thing for about another twenty four <laughs> hours. Like, yeah. like there you I go. will, I will pay you eighty five dollars to come over yes. here and break some shit, come and you on. don't have to put any protective anything on. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking That's of, so we awesome. should put some shit in her dumpster. We actually should. Yeah. You have this yeah. for how long? Uh, until in the morning. Oh. Mm. We'll be over in about an hour. (laughs) Yeah, good, good. Bring it on. I would love it. I would absolutely love it. My sister um, works at a hospital, and she's a part of the the operations um, 
department at her hospital and she has to make these uh the security badges for people to wear like when they you know how they like, click the badge before they can give you your medicine or before you go yeah. in the door or whatever yeah, yeah so she has to make these these badges and she like like her badge printing machine is like her nemesis i mean that I've thing i've heard her talk about it. oh it's just horrible <laughs> and she sent me a video this is a few months ago now she sent me a video they got rid of that machine and got a new one and the new one's a piece of shit as well so it's like it's not like oh yeah i got a new machine it's like i got a new piece of shit that i have to learn <laughs> how doesn't work but they let her take a baseball bat and go out there and beat the shit yes. out of that old machine oh. and the oh video of her doing it i mean you can just feel the energy just yes. like just i'm i hate this machine yes. oh. and it oh gosh sometimes it just feels good to let it out i agree i have another great story about beating the shit out of something this is fun so <laughs> not long i would say maybe six months before my mom passed away she was having a lot of issues like with um her gait when she would walk or whatever. So she was a little bit like wobbly and I kind of always had to have my hand on her belt is how I felt. And so um I go home to visit and she says, Hey, will you go down to your sister's church with me today? And I said, why? <laughs> and she said, well, they're having this little carnival and I want to go to it. So oh, that sounds fun. Let's do it. And I was like, fun. We're going to, it's going to be great. I pull up to this church and they have an old vehicle with people lined up wearing headgear, beating the crap out of it with a <laughs> uh, bat. Yes. And my mom said, that's what I want to do. Like yes. I, she had that in mind the entire time. I love it. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? So <laughs> I have video of me that somebody took, I was like, can you please take, and, and I am squatted down holding her waistband, holding her <laughs> up like a puppet while she's swinging the bat above my head, beating the crap out of this car. You guys, this that is like is six so months amazing. before my mom passed away. And that was so important to her to beat the shit out of that yes. car. And yes. I appreciate that. Like, yes. but I, I nearly died like three times on the swing. <laughs> <laughs> she almost knocked you out. She yes. did. I was literally like squatting and just holding her up. Cause she's like <laughs> falling over while she's swing. These people are like, this woman's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is so, so great. I'm glad that she was able to get that out. Like we really don't like our culture in my humble opinion does not know how to appropriately deal with anger and yeah. you know when when my nephews get get mad my first inclination is to go stop it stop mm -hmm. getting mad and so what I've started doing with them is when they started getting angry if it's a place where I can do this I'll go come on tell me how mad you are yeah. and, uh, and they yeah. They respond to that so well. And it's like, I just think that we have all been trained to like button it up and keep mm -hmm. it in and be appropriate, you know? And it's yeah. like, so we need things like rage rooms and carnivals where you can hold your mom by her belt. Like, I think that that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I would like to point out that she was a liar. There was no carnival. The entire, she got me there because <laughs> oh. she knows I love a fair. But oh, the whole thing was only was just the hey, car. line up and beat the crap out of the car. Wow. That's so amazing. <laughs> she's not a truth teller is really what I'm getting at. <laughs> I was imagining like a Ferris wheel and like the little like yeah, swinging swings and stuff like that. But yeah. no, it was just the car. That's and awesome. That's the, so you guys were at her funeral. So that was the church. So just imagine like, yep. okay. you know. Yeah. Her beating the crap out of a car there. Yeah. I love it. I don't know. I didn't show that at her funeral. That would have been fun. <laughs> you might've had a little bit on your mind. Oh, that's true. Uh, I would like to share some news that, that hit the news waves this week. There's been um, quite a bit. My goodness. Yeah. This is not the stuff that really matters, but um, <laughs> please read this title, Kat. 
Missing mother found dead inside 16 foot long python in Indonesia. Oh my gosh. A woman <laughs> oh my has been found dead inside the belly of a snake after it swallowed her whole in central Indonesia, a local official said Saturday, making at least the fifth person to be devoured by a python in the country since 2017. Oh my God. Okay, let's read the comments. Uh, <laughs> note to self, never go to Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. How uh, horrific for her and her family. This is just the most tragic story. <laughs> what about I'm this not one? clicking that link. <laughs> Please get this off my timeline. Also, how tall was she? <laughs> <laughs> But why do we kill the animal doing normal things? The lady was gone already. Wait a minute. Was she dead? Well, I would imagine if the python squeezed her to death and then ate her. Hold on. I got to click link the link in bio. Link in bio. Okay. Where, where do I find? Oh, here it is. Okay. Let's dig deeper guys. <laughs> she was devoured by. Oh, here it is. Oh, it swallowed her whole... Oh, my gosh. Is this a video? I don't think I can watch that. I can't watch that. A woman has been found dead inside the belly of a... This isn't funny, guys, but what (laughs) in the hell? The husband of a 45-year-old Farida and residents of Kalimpang Village in South Sulawesi... Sulawesi. Sulawesi. Province discovered her on Friday inside the reticulated python, which measured about 16 feet. Wow. The mother of four had gone missing Thursday night and failed to return home, forcing a search effort. Her husband found her belongings, which made him suspicious. The villagers then searched the area. They soon spotted a python with a large belly. They agreed to cut open the python's stomach. As soon as they did, Farida's head was immediately visible. She was found fully clothed inside the snake. How do you not... Can't you fight back? Or maybe not. They're pretty strong. That's a 16-foot python. All muscle. This is insane. Yeah. They're known to eat monkeys, pigs, and other mammals. Here's what I would like to know. How did they just casually approach a 16 foot python and just cut his belly open was it right. sleeping right who was knows it full? oh my gosh oh man people keep these snakes as pets i know right right I, and i was thinking that you were going to talk about how many people have been attacked by sharks in destin in the past like few days have you guys no heard way. about this stuff not- in it- destin yes say more. yes like right on 30a it's like there are like there are like that live there yes i know uh. and and apparently three different people um two young people and one person like kind of our age um were attacked by sharks and like lost limbs like not a limb like limbs oh what? my god yes and it's I'm like it it, yeah i mean it's like why are the waters of destin florida shark infested in this way so if you don't know this area we're talking about it is um like the fancy place to go it's the called 30a um, yeah, and that's why the sharks is, are there. They're there to eat rich people. I yep. know. I w- if you're going to eat them, they might as well be tasty. Back-to-back shark attacks injure two teens, adult, near Florida Beach. One victim loses arm. Man. Lost her left arm in the attack. You, have you ever seen those videos where they like show people playing in the beach and it's from above and then there's yeah. just like sharks right oh, there? Oh, yes. That oh, so scare, scary. This is why I don't me. go in the ocean. Well, and to me, I'm like, why, why go in the ocean if this can happen? Like, like get a swimming right. pool. Go to a swimming pool. Yeah. Come to Cat's swimming pool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Cat, can we come to your swimming pool? 
Uh huh. Open cool. invitation. Great. Um, I I am shocked by that, Kat. I did not know that happened. Yes. Wow. Well, now, what other news do you have for us, Moose? Well, I wanted to share something that my therapist is having me do, and it's not easy, but it is profound. So, the great Elizabeth Gilbert, who we know and love, um, and by know, we don't know her at all. <laughs> but we know of her. We, we've, we've read a couple of her books. <laughs> yes. She we probably know knows of us. She probably listens every week. I mean... We would be friends if we knew each other. So yes. it feels like we know her, For which is sure. also really weird when people think they know you. <laughs> so, okay, back to the exercise. So those of you who know, those of you who don't know, she does this this uh, thing on Substack called Letters from Love. And I've heard of it, and I subscribe to it, and I've been reading them. And she writes, uh, I'm going to share how she describes what Letters from Love is, but um, my therapist had me do this recently and um, it's incredible. And so I, she has different guest writers do a letter from love each week. And so I wanted to share what this is first. And then I wanted to share one that she wrote. Cool. Okay. Here we go, guys. What we're trying to do actually in this practice is we're trying to get you on the other side of your voice. Right. Um, so it, so don't like, it's not a deposition. Don't ask a million questions. You're simply asking unconditional love. If unconditional love had a voice, what would it want you to know today? And that is it. And if you have trouble accessing mm -hmm. it, try to imagine times where you have spoken kindly and tenderly to somebody who is in distress or in need, to a friend, to a loved one, to a child, to a, if you've ever comforted a pet who was frightened and shaken by thunder or loud noises or strange toys in the middle of the hallway that it didn't know what to do with. <laughs> um, if you've ever settled a horse, if you've ever rocked a baby, then you know how to do this. If you've ever been there for a friend, then you know how to do this. It's in you. It's already in you. That's all you're accessing is that part of you that knows how to say to somebody, I'm right here mm -hmm. and everything's going to be all right. Yeah. And you've got me and I'm not going anywhere. And then just let your pen without too much thinking, mm -hmm. we're trying to kind of get on the other side of your mind and into your heart. Let your pen start to tell you what unconditional love would specifically say to you. And what I find so beautiful about this practice is that other people can say these kind things to me, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really have the same impact on my yeah. nervous system as when yeah. I say it to me because I'm the only one who knows the depth of my shame. I'm the only one who knows the depth of my pain. I'm the only one who knows what I'm struggling with right now. And this is why this kind of practice is just so laser. It's like a laser going straight into the pain because it knows where it is. So that's kind of a bit of what she shares, kind of what wow. a letter of love is. And so um, she writes one weekly and if you're a subscriber on her sub stack, which is only five bucks a month, if anyone wants to do it, um, it's amazing. And so she just recently had Martha Beck write her mm. guest um, one for for her column. And um, and it's beautiful. But I actually want to read what Elizabeth Gilbert wrote this week. Uh, Kat, do you want to read it or would you rather receive it? Oh, uh, mm. mm. <laughs> I, I would be happy. To, mm. <laughs> I would be happy to read it and receive it. <laughs> wow. I didn't. You guys are such dirty minds. OK, it's not very long here. It's just the part that's in italic, but I would love for you to read it. OK, my tiny acorn, my love, my child, sit with me a moment and put down your worries, your desperate strategies, your doubts and fears. You will never know lasting peace as long as you need everyone in the world to be happy with you at the same time. It cannot be accomplished, tiny angel, no matter how much you try. And oh, how you try. But you simply cannot do it, my love. You simply cannot keep everybody pleased. You couldn't do it in childhood, and you cannot do it now as a grown woman. 
Trying to keep everybody pleased with you makes you tired and worn down and discouraged, as would any job that is innately impossible. So stop. Why would we send you to the earth to do impossible jobs? Silly little weary bumblebee, (laughs) let that hard work go. Allow me to be the one who unceasingly loves and approves of you so that you don't need to seek it from others. This will be a relief to both you and them. If you let me love you, if you really sink down into this love, you can allow everyone else to come and go without drama, without clinging, without fear. And people will always come and go from your life, little one. That is the natural way of things. Nobody is meant to stay forever. Nobody is meant to stay in one place or even in one mindset forever. Let other people have their journeys. Let other people have their feelings. Let other people have their own experiences. There is no higher respect you could offer to another human being than to allow them to hold their own opinions, even about you. Allow it. Surrender and allow it and carry on with your own journey. All is well, dearest one. All is going to plan. Relax your shoulders now. Relax your heart. Listen to me speaking to you from the very center of yourself, from the very center of love itself. You know who you belong to, and that is all that matters. You belong to me, little one. You are made of love, and you are made of me. That is settled law. Know this truth, and you will know peace. Now shut this book and sit with me for a few moments in the stillness. Have a gentle day. Stay with me. I love you. Mm. So good. Ooh, that's so good. It's like Man. it's like reading. Well, let me stop making it my own story. What is it like for you guys to hear that? Oh, such a good reminder because I um want to live from a place that is from the inside outside, mm-hmm. not from the outside in. Mm-hmm. You know paying attention to what everyone else is worried about me or thinks about me. I want to come with confidence and let those who aren't meant to be fall away Mm -hmm. and be okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Those are really, really fantastic intentions. How does it hit you, Sarah? Um, I kind of, I guess walk away feeling like it's just, I don't know, maybe easier to just be yourself that's what I'm experiencing right now. Instead of having to try to mm-hmm. be what you think others want of you or expect of you or whatever. And it's not, you don't have to like try to be yourself. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just there. It's our, you are you. That's probably the easiest thing. But the hardest thing is to like be willing to share that, I guess, with the world. Yeah. yeah. And, and willingly like kind of just throw it out there and go it, whether it's accepted or not, like Mm -hmm. this is me. Is this Mm -hmm. who I am? I don't know. I thought that was cool. Um, I agree. I like the concept of it being about or from unconditional love as Mm -hmm. we see it Mm -hmm. uh, through our own filter. Like what is, whatever that means to us, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cause it's unique to us. And then, and then it, it comes from a space of like, what do I want? What do I need at my core? Yeah. How, how to, how do I be what I need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm reminded, it reminds me of, um, (laughs) oddly, it reminds me of my early experiences with Christian music. Um, and it, it reminds me of, and I'm sure this has like a, a more fancy word than what I know it to be called, but songs that are written from the perspective of God, Mm -hmm. which I think is kind of, bold for yeah. anyone to write right. a song and say like i i think that i am speaking the heart of god you know what i mean that's that's huge that that in and of itself takes some some boldness and some confidence and in songs that are written from the perspective of God toward me or toward the listener, I'm always just amazed at being reminded of how loved, how unconditionally loved I am. And it's so weird to me that it's like, I can hear a song and go, Oh, God loves me. That is so great. And it, but how hard (laughs) it is for me to love me 
in that same way for me to sing that song over myself, for me to read this entry and consider I am that little bumblebee. I am that little baby or whatever it is, you know, and it's, it's fascinating to me how, how easy it is to pour it out to other people than it is for me to receive it. I I find that really fascinating. I think that's our entire work Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. loving ourselves because Mm -hmm. The triggers we have on the outside come from the inside. And if we can see that, that the divine Christ, whatever you say is inside of us, I think that's easier to love ourselves. If we Mm -hmm. can see that Mm -hmm. like, Oh, Mm -hmm. God is inside of me, not Mm -hmm. outside of me. Right. So this thing I feel inside of me that feels very real. Some would call it a personality. Some would call it your soul whatever, like that it's actually in the best way I can honor God hmm. is by putting what he created out into the world. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yet so freaking hard to do. So, so hard to do. I was in class a few weeks ago and was reminded that one of the first steps toward healing is making the covert overt. What does that mean again? It's like taking what's hidden, taking what's secret and putting it out into the light. Oh, Lord Jesus. Can you speak that again like a pastor? Because (laughs) that is huge. Yeah. I mean, can we just pause, say it again, and let's all take that in. One of the first steps toward healing is making the covert overt. What is inside, what is secret what is in the dark and is not exposed to the light is hidden. And that's the kind of stuff we repress. It's the kind of stuff we push Mm -hmm. down. It's the kind of stuff that develops armoring in our bodies. And it's, it's the kind of thing that like sets like muscular, like memories and stuff like that in, into place. And so it's like, if we can allow those things to, have just a little bit of exposure and not be hidden, then that is the beginning is part of the beginning of healing. And I feel like that love that is also sometimes it feels very covert. Like I I know it's in there. There's a love for cat inside of this body, but like it is in some chasm somewhere just hiding out from everything. You yeah. know, and it's like this kind of practice brings that forth. And I think, I think that's really beautiful. Yeah. I, it makes me, did you want to share something, Sarah? I saw you unmute earlier. Um, I was just going to say the other thing I loved was that uh, the when she listed the examples of ways to comfort animals, humans, mm-hmm. you know, things. And it's, and she said, if you've done that, you know how to do it. Yes. And it's yeah. like, oh my God, yeah. we all know how to comfort someone or something. Yeah. yeah. I love that because you're right, especially with an animal. Yeah. I mean, like, there's nothing like whether it's like an end of life, like, moment where you are so grateful or like fear, like an animal in fear. Of course, mm-hmm. you are just like, whatever it takes, you want to take care of mm-hmm. it. How and do you do child. that for yourself? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Child's children's too. Like we, we were those kids, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would like to invite anyone listening and especially you two to take just a moment and find that little kid inside of you and imagine what it would be like to comfort yeah. that little kid. And just take that with you this week. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. My little kid, she likes to cuddle up next to me Mm. with her blue blanket. Mm. And that's like her thing. And she, but she's like a cat. She wants it to be on her terms. Uh You Mm -hmm. know, like I've got to let her come to me, which is fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like mine, mine kind of nestles up against my my left like inner shoulder not quite my breast like just right right here like in in this area and just enjoys just being loosely held like not like 
you know, but yeah. just like just yeah. really reassured. Yeah. Um, in some other news, we have a Sarah McLaughlin show coming up, her 30th <laughs> anniversary. And I just right around needed, the corner. It is right around the corner. And I just needed you to know that she is asking something from her fans. And um I really want to encourage you to do it. Oh, so okay. <laughs> she has asked her fans that she wants them to sing the song ice cream and you may get put in the video that is um that they're going to show at her shows for ice cream so that is so I thought, smart i think that you should do you should be eating an ice cream cone like a mm-hmm. little kid mm-hmm. and seeing your love is better than ice cream your and- love Better and you, than and you, ice cream. Than ice cream. Wait, and you than... use the ice cream cone as your microphone. Yeah. Oh, so like a brilliant. like a a nutty buddy. Yeah. For yeah. sure. For sure. Hold on. I'm gonna pull up that song, guys. <laughs> I hate Yo, that song. I hate, hate that it? song. I, I hate, hate it. it. I kind of don't like... think we should play it. <laughs> I know. It's like the dumbest song ever. Whoever is coaching her in her team on how to engage with fans around this tour is really, really smart. And I want to say to you, Sarah, that your willingness to do the things that they've been asking you to do, I think says a lot about your character and your maturity as an artist, because some of the things like asking your fans to sing ice cream and you might get put in a video, like some artists would have a really hard time asking their fans to do that. And I just really appreciate it. So since our podcast is a podcast meant to encourage Sarah McLaughlin, I just wanted to say that. (laughs) (laughs) It took me like a good three paragraphs to realize you were talking about Sarah McLaughlin and not Sarah Reed. Yeah, me too. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> I was like, Sarah's I was, an artist? Yeah, I was Sarah. beaming from ear to ear. Yeah. I, like, I, I, <laughs> Kat loves me so much. She thinks I'm an artist. I looked down and Sarah was with me. She was like, oh my God, this is so sweet. <laughs> I love that. Sarah, Your love <laughs> is better, better than ice chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> I mean, my grandma could have written that song. And <laughs> maybe she did. She was the only writer. Yeah, she's the only one that wrote that. Listen, I she's, think we need to do a pool party, ice cream, music video. And yes. Submit oh, it. yeah. Yes. We, when, we need the, a cat and moose ice cream video. Yes. When is the deadline? I didn't, I didn't catch the details. I didn't think we were a detailed <laughs> podcast. We're like a top we line podcast. Like we give you the headline and you got to go figure out we the rest for yourself. We skim the top. Yep. <laughs> Just the overt here. Yeah. Not the covert. No Just covert. straight up overt. <laughs> One of Have mine's... a great week, everyone. Oh, we're not no, done. No, I'm done. Sorry. I'm done. Okay. No, no, no. Please don't be. Go ahead. No, I'm done. I'm really done. Okay. Oh. Bye. I had an ant in my ear. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I thought it was, but it wasn't. Well, guys, we love you. I love you. I love you. Special thanks to our producer, Sarah Reed. To find out more, go to catandmoosepodcast.com. Production.